Good morning, everybody, and welcome to ART 196, Introdu Introduction to Designing Web Graphics um, for the fall semester 2021. Um, where we left off on Tuesday was working with templates and um, updating child pages from the templates was not working for me where we left off. And suddenly today it is working. So we'll see if maybe it was um, putting additional, you know, taxing my processor on my computer, also having a Zoom going at the same time. I don't know. Um, but um, as I was explaining to one of you earlier that sometimes um, Dreamweaver can be quirky. It doesn't work always like it's supposed to. So um, let's try something right here. And if it doesn't work right away, then I'll leave it until the end of the lesson. And I'll save it, close it, and hopefully it will update. So again, well, I'm looking at the child page right now. Um, this is our About Us page where <clears throat> um, we are going to add content today. That's the goal. But this page was generated from the template, the DWT file. The DW DWT file does not have to be um, uploaded when you publish your website. This is a totally local file that is generated by Dreamweaver so that you can create child pages from this parent. So let's try this. I'm going to go ahead and in and, and green news up here, and I'm switched from live view to design view. And I'm just going to remove in the nav bar here the word green. Okay. So I just have news. I'm going to save the changes that I've made to my template. And this is what should have happened last Thursday or last Tuesday, but it didn't. It'll say update template files. So it says this one page, which we have created based on the template, do you wish to update it? Yes, I do. Go ahead and update. This is now, as I said, it wasn't working Tuesday. Tuesday afternoon, it was. It, it is. It continues to work today. I did not change a thing. So I don't have an explanation for why it wasn't working. I click update and then I can go ahead and when it's done, I can go ahead and I can close that. Now, as we create additional pages, even though those pages are closed, you should um, see that dialog box asking if you want to update those pages as well. Now, when we go back to the about page, you can see that green news is gone. It's just news. So I'll go back again and I'll change it to green news later because it's no longer centered and we could go back and change that. But what I wanna do now is to show you now that we've created a child page from a template, how to um, add content from other sources. Um, we're gonna add sources from rich text format an RTF file. We're also going to add content from another HTML page. So we have a choice of how we do that. There's a variety of ways to do it. And sometimes it gets a little tricky. Um, I prefer to use, to make sure that when I'm in the, um, the mode here that I look, uh, that I'm in split mode so I can see what's going on. And oftentimes I will copy and paste from other sources just directly into the code and make sure it's going into the right location. Because sometimes I have an issue with that. I, it just doesn't work for me other ways. So let's start, though, with the article. And for headlines, you typically just highlight the text. And when you do, you'll notice that the little box around it is in orange. So that enables you to edit it from the live view. And what we want to do is put about, um, yeah, see, it slows down a little bit, um, Meridian. Green start. Oh, there we go. My 
keyboard here is just really sluggish. And then for the subhead, you do the same. When you click on it, you'll notice that that's the H2 tag. And I can go ahead and all of this in this article can be edited. So I'll just highlight this. Now I can do it from there, or you can see as I highlight it in the code view, it's also being highlighted. So I can go ahead in the code view, I can delete if I want, and I can go directly into the code view here. I don't want um, that um, non-break of uh, non-space. And then I'll put um, green start. So I'm doing it from code view, but you'll notice that it's an automatically updating in the live view. So I have, um, what do I say? I want green start. Whoops, I can't spell here. And then it should be awareness, green awareness and action. So generally for speaking for um, heads and subheads, um, you just type it in by hand. That's the easiest way. But what they have provided for us, and let me bring up, this was created in just a text document. And in rich text, it does already have the paragraph breaks. So we have, you know, you can see in on my screen that I have that we have some text that we want to put in here where it says insert content here. And um, it's in, we already have the paragraph breaks and we want to keep those. Um, it, it doesn't matter what font was used in the rich text format, because as soon as we paste it into our document, the style sheet that we have developed um, will override anything else. So what I want to do here, and I'm going to show you a gotcha. Let me go ahead and bring that back up again. So I'm going to come up here and I'm just going to click anywhere inside it and hit Command or Control A to select all and to copy the text. Command C to copy. Now I can come back over here and I'm going to click inside the paragraph tag. Now, if I highlight this, insert content here, and I paste it, it will paste. But notice what happens. If I, all the paragraph breaks are gone, I don't want that to happen. I want to retain or main, maintain the copyright, the, the um, paragraph break. So I'm going to hit Command Z to undo. It comes back. So when it's highlighted in orange, you can type it in by hand. I could go down to the, um, uh, the code view and I, where it says in con insert content here, I could go ahead and I could paste that in there. But again, it's going to be one paragraph. So instead, what I want to do is I want to click on the, um, the little paragraph. It's not a paragraph tag, but the... Um, the um, the block up here for the paragraph so that it's no longer orange but is in blue, and now I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to paste. And let's see what there we go. So it still has insert content here that that paragraph that we need to select and delete and get rid of, which was served as a placeholder. But notice now how all of the um, paragraph breaks. Um, remain in con uh, remain in in uh, intact. So the next step now is we're going to insert um, some quotes and the uh, the site tags along with them, and we're going to insert some images <clears throat> as well as some additional information here. And I'm just going to do it. I'm going to try it a couple of different ways. But for example, with the, um, the quotes, I think it's easier just to copy and paste inside code view. It works, it, um, I've never had a, a, an error with that. 
So let's go to what they provided for us where it says sidebar two. And when we paste it in there, um, this has already been, <clears throat> because this has already been properly um, uh, tagged properly, the, the um, what can I say, the um, proper syntax has been added for block quotes. So what I've done in code view is I've just copied all three quotes, including the site tags. Now, if I wanted to, <clears throat> I could go ahead and I could copy the entire aside, but I don't want to do that. Um, the opening and closing tag. I just have these three um, quotes that I'm going to go ahead and hit Command C to copy. And now I'm going to go back to my <clears throat> About Us page. <clears throat> and I'm going to click anywhere inside <clears throat> to see where that block quote begins. So what I'm going to do now in the, the code view is highlight the opening and clo closing tag for that block quote. And now I'm going to hit Command V to paste the code that I had just copied from that other page. And when <clears throat> you can see that when it's you know, correctly inserted and it's correctly marked up and has the correct syntax because we've already styled it, it looks perfect. We don't need to add a thing to that. It will be a little bit different for the, um, the information that we're going to put to the right because what they have added over here to our um, sidebar, as you'll see that we have um, three images and we have um, some, uh, um, what are they called? Um, uh, captions for each of those. And those we need to go back into um, our style sheet and we need to add some styles specifically for those. Okie doke. Everybody with me so far? So that's working pretty nicely. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm just gonna, rather than I'm gonna select in this particular case, um, because each of these are contained in their own section. Um, section is an also uh, a, a tag that's used to um, isolate and group parts of your content. They're used frequently so that if you want to be more specific about um, styling one section differently from another, one group from another, that you can do so um, by wrapping it in a section tag. So each of these, if I click here and I look down here, you'll see that this, both the, um, the image um, and the caption are wrapped in a section tag. Well, I'm gonna take all three of these, just as I did for the quotes. And I'm gonna come down here and I'm going to select all three sections, which contain the figure image and also the, um, the caption. So I'm gonna click down here and I'm just gonna highlight all of it, all the way down. And I don't want the, um, the closing tag for the aside, I just want the closing tag for the third section. And I can see as I highlight that, that all three have been highlighted and I can go ahead and hit Command C and copy now. And now I go back to my About Us page that we created and I can click inside here and we don't need the H2 tag anymore. We don't need the paragraph tag. So contained within opening and closing tag, of the aside, I'm gonna highlight this and I'm gonna hit Command V to paste what I just copied from before. And you can see that it, it copied and pasted the images in the, the, in the captions in the um, right aside beautifully. However, um, you can see that they still need to be formatted. One of the things that I, um, is kind of my pet peeve is that when you do this, um, the default is, is that the image, for example, as well as the text, butts up right up against the, um, the, the edge of the aside or any div that you create. And what I prefer 
that you can see over here is that there's a little bit of a gap. In fact, I would probably prefer to have a bit more padding inside the left and the right. Um, a minimum of 10 pixels, oftentimes maybe as much as 20 pixels, just to give some error around it for the viewer's eye to be able to track from one line to the next. So what we need to do next is we're going to style these and then we'll be pretty much done. Um, I'll go back and I'll change the, um, um, <clears throat> the, uh, the template and hopefully it updates this page. And um, later on, we'll, we'll test it with some other new pages, not today. But as I said, I want to go back to, um, to Moby Rise and show you how to do some of these things that I did for my page. So um, to do this, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to make sure that I have the CSS designer up. OK, um, I'm going to pull this down a little bit so that I can see all of this. I want to make sure that I have green styles CSS selected. <clears throat> then what we're going to do is we're going to add another selector. So what we want to do is we're going to add, um, and it's going to be dot sidebar two section figure image. So I'm going to, with this image selected, let's go ahead and select it. Okay, image. I'm going to go ahead and add a selector and let's see what it adds. So we can see that it's section figure image. But before that, I want to put, which is correct, that's the correct syntax for that, but I want to put um, dot sidebar two with a space um, because that's specific to the right side. And then specific within that right aside is a section within each section, a figure um, image. And then what we can do is we can add the padding that we'll need for that. And I think that's pretty much all we need to do, add padding and margins, because we want it generally to be centered and we want to make sure that there's a little bit of space top and bottom. So to add that um, selector, I hit the return key twice. Make sure that that's added. And now what we're going to do over here is in um, under our layout section here, under margins, I'm going to use the shorthand. So for top and bottom, I'm going to use zero pixels. And for the left and right, I'm going to select auto. So it, hopefully it automatically centers it. So I'm going to put in zero pixels and space and type in auto. And then I'm going to hit the tab key. And let's see if it fixes it. And nothing. So, oh, I need to also say there is one more thing I need to go under display. Um, I need to display block. So that should help me fix that. So let's go ahead and select block. And that should fix it. There we go. So by adding that last one under display block. Now, anytime you add an image inside um, sidebar two, um, it will automatically center it and it will automatically um, format it correctly. So now we've added that. That works really nicely. So now what we want to do is we want to do the same for the figure, figure captions. So I'm going to click inside <clears throat> one of the figure captions and I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to go ahead and add another selector. And this is going to be similar. I want it to be dot sidebar two dot sidebar two space and then i want it to be section figure um figure caption okay and so everything else is uh, fortunately already done for us so all i have to do is hit the return key twice i've added it there we go figure caption Big caption. And now what I want to do is, <clears throat> again, we're going to adjust the margins. So we're going to come back up here. And under margins, um, it's going to be a little bit different. We want each one to be a little bit um, um, 
the top have a little bit of space. So we're going to put um, five pixels. Um, we want the right to be 10 pixels so that we, it's what I was talking about. So there's a gap here. So the right one is going to be 10. <clears throat> and then we want um, the bottom to be 15 pixels. If you wanted to use the shorthand, we could do that as well. And let's see, one more. The left, we want the left to also be um, 10 pixels. The right and the left also need, or need to be 10 pixels. So let's see if it fixes it. And there we go. So if I click off of that, you can see that there's a little bit of a, a little bit of space between the caption and the image, and that it's inset both in the left and the right side. We use 10 pixels. I would probably like a little bit more, at least on, more on the left, you know, maybe 15 pixels for myself. But now you can see that each of these have already been formatted. So we're ready to go. We've taken our template. <clears throat> And we have um, created a, a child page from it. And we've started the process of, you know, of different ways of adding content now. And in some instances, like with the um, captions, if they're already formatted as a caption um, from another HTML page, then it will automatically be formatted correctly. Um, we've inserted some content from uh, a, a text document and it, it too in the paragraph form was formatted correctly the only thing that we had to change in this particular instance is we had to add a style to center um, the images that we in, placed in here and the captions for those images and then we're set to go so all i need to do now is i need to save everything so i'm going to go to file I'm just going to say save all because remember we made some changes to the um, <clears throat> to our style sheet, so we want to make sure that that's updated as well. Now, what I want to do <clears throat> now, all of this is saved. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to close the about us page, okay? Since it's all been saved, and I still have my Dreamweaver template up here. And I'm going to put back in here where it says news. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to put green back in here. Okay. And I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to save this. Command S to save. And you'll notice that it, I'm crossed my fingers and I'm lucky today. Things are working. Um, it says, do you want to update? this page that was based on this template about us.html yes i do even though that page is closed it recognizes that it was generated from the template and then um, the changes that i've made to the template will now up propagate across all the pages that have been if we so choose that have been based on that template so what this enables you to do we only have one page right now but in the future, if you were working for a client um, and you had five pages, 10 pages, 100 pages, and you chose to make a change to the template, it would automatically update all of those pages. So that can be a real benefit to you. Um, it can make short order of um, something that would normally take quite a bit of time to do. Um, so I'll click update. It's done. Let's go back and close it. And let's go back and let's open up that file that I have in here. And it should be, um, let's close the resource folder. Let's close the template folder. And here is the about us HTML. I'll open that back up and let's see if it changed the up here. Okay, let's switch from design view to live view.
And we can see that it's changed. It's now, before it was just news, now it's green news. So it is working the way it's supposed to. Very nice. So <clears throat> the other thing that I wanted to show you today, unless there are any questions from either one of you, is I want to switch to MobiRise because that's the website that you guys, aside from the lessons that you're supposed to be working on. Okay. Um, if you want to mirror what you did with Wix, I'm good with that. If you want to change gears and um, go in a different direction, um, I encourage that as well. But I wanted to show you what I have done um, when I demonstrated to you MobiRise. Um, I made some modifications to my page. <clears throat> um, so if we look at this now, and I'm in, in MobiRise, um, I have a single page format that I've um, published. Um, this is just a test publish. I haven't published it on the internet itself, um, but it's published in, you're view, we're viewing it in a browser. Now I can scroll up and down, <coughs> okay? And I can also, if I want to go all the way down to the portfolio, I click and notice how it automatically scrolls down to that section. <coughs> if I wanna go back up home, I can do that. If I wanna go all, jump all the way down to the contact us page or contact us section, I can do that. Um, a couple of things is they come to mind here. Uh, I wanna remind you of is that by default, it normally says, <coughs> excuse me, copyright, MobiRise. Make sure that you change it, all of these little things for yourself. Also notice too, that I changed the favicon up here to have mine. Otherwise it, that you will use theirs by default. Um, I changed, uh, added my own images for the gallery. It automatically formatted them. They were a little bit large, but you, it will only accept JPEGs, GIFs, and PINGs. Okay. <clears throat> and also, depending on the size that you <clears throat> use, notice how it automatically kind of formats and changes things. Now, if we go back to the MobiRise itself, and it's a bit limited, and I've talked about this before, is that you have the four options here to view and to see what it's going to look like on different size screens. What we're seeing right now is on a large screen on your computer. If I click here, it would be a horizontal tablet, and it really just kind of shrinks it down. The same with a vertical tablet. Okay, and notice the glitch that I have here where I had moving forward for my title. There isn't enough space. So I need to decide, am I going to go ahead and reduce the size of the text? Or what do I wanna do with that? When I switch to mobile view, it looks just fine. The mobile view is truly another <clears throat> um, format that they've used. And if I click here, well, I can't do that here, but in the other, in the, if I go back in the browser here and I shrink it down and I get the little hamburger, I can click here. And again, if we want to jump down to the portfolio, I can. If I want to go back up to the home page, I can. And then if you want to just close that little hamburger, that's for small screens, um, what's commonly used in place of having buttons or links here it's a little bit easier to see and to read. And this is a, a, a bootstrap component that is standard these days. So let me go back to MobiRise and I wanna show you um, how I linked each of those. So as you add your links up here, that when I click on this, you'll notice that we have various options here. If I want to delete it, I can. If I want to add an item, I can. If I want to add a submenu, I can. Um, if I want to insert an icon here, I can. Um, if I want to change the color, I can. 
Um, if I can change the font here if I want, but what I want to focus on is the link itself. So if you have, and this pertains to a single page um, format as I view. So when I click here, we have different options here. And you have, do you want to link it to a separate page? Do you want to link that to another email address or a web address? Do you want to link it to an email? Do you want to link it to a phone or a file that maybe you have? And you can have a PDF file. I've done that on my personal website um, or any of these other file formats. And when you do that, it will pop it up. And you can also specify, do you want to open it in a new window when you do that? Well, I want to go back to the page. And because I only have one page, then how am I linking it to, you know, and I need to ask, how do I link it to those other sections? Well, this allows me over here to link it to different blocks on the home page because I only have one page. I link this to the top of the page. If I want to link it to the header, I can. If I want to link it to features, I could. This is the gallery. This is the form that I have down below. This is the footer, or do I want to link it to the bottom of the page? <clears throat> These are all the sections that we have in this one page, um, uh, one page website. And we, that's what we're doing. We're, and we will do this in a later lesson. Um, and we'll be in lesson nine, I believe, when we cover, or maybe 10, I can't remember, I'm sorry. Anyway, um, <clears throat> We will be creating anchor tags to be able to, where you may have seen on websites where it says go to top or go to a particular section. Well, that's what we're doing here. So if you do choose to use a single page website and you have multiple sections, this is where you would go to add those links. Um, I think it's important um, to, to avoid uh, for the end user to avoid having to scroll so much, to have the same links that you would even if you had separate pages. And if you do have separate pages, you can still do that. I can come over here. Here's our, our where it has pages. I have my home page. If I click here, I can go ahead and I can create a new page. So if you would rather have four separate pages or five or as many as you want, you can add those pages here name them, it will automatically take the, um, the nav bar that we created and our home page, and it will apply it to all of those other pages to maintain consistency. You may have to go back in if you wish and where you have a footer, um, make sure that that is, is on all of the other pages. So again, to maintain consistency, um, if not, then um, it looks, your website's gonna look a little funky. Um, make sure that each page has those basic elements, just as the page has the basic elements in our, um, uh, uh, um, our Dreamweaver website that we're creating. Um, you can go from one to two to three columns or you know, change that up, but you always need to have your menu along the top, your nav bar, if that's where you placed it and you need to have your footer along the bottom. The internal com, um, content can vary from page to page. Um, unless there's a reason for you to changing up colors, um, I would also maintain a consistent color scheme from page to page. Um, I would also maintain consistent use of fonts from page to page. Um, so that as well, so that when um, the end user or the viewer goes from one page or one section to another, that um, there's that consistency for them that they know that they're on your, your website and they haven't gone someplace else. So that's pretty much what I wanted to show you um, today, unless you guys have more questions. We finished up this lesson. <clears throat> Um, I encourage you um, to use your own images rather than to rely on 
um, stock images. I think you'll have more fun with it. The images on my website, I took with my phone, excuse me, with my phone, and they come out quite nice. And most of you have smartphones and the same will apply. They'll look really, really nice. Um, I think it will be a, give it a personal touch <clears throat> that um, has, even if, it, if there's some flaws or glitches in, in your images, um, I think it will uh, be a, a more dynamic in the sense that it will um, give the viewer a sense of you, who you are, as opposed to just some sort of generic website that they're going to. Okay, so we're done a bit early today. And fortunately, um, everything is working today back from uh, Dreamweaver here. And to repeat, I don't have an answer for you why that was not working on Tuesday. It worked after I logged off and it continues to work this morning. And that's how it should work when you generate child pages from a template. So um, I'm gonna go ahead and unless you have questions, um, that's gonna be it for today. Okay. No questions? No? Okay. Then I'm going to stop um, recording and say goodbye. And you guys are um, free to leave. Okay. So um, on Tuesday, we'll start working on lesson nine, which means that we'll be creating new pages from our template. And we'll, I'll be showing you different ways of adding content just as we did today for our about page. Some of the pages get fairly complex, some, especially when we start to use tables. Others are, you know, are like this page. They're not that difficult. Okay. They're not that difficult until they don't work. And then you have to go back and troubleshoot and figure out what the heck happened. Okay. So I'm going to pause recording, say goodbye, and um, you guys are free to leave.